You know, it's the summertime and I got some lobsters here. I'd love to be outside grilling them up, but it's far too hot. And so today we're cooking summer classics inside and we're making a lobster risotto. This risotto will be spectacular. And to make it spectacular, we're going to need to make a lobster stock to make the risotto. So we're going to do that first. I want to thank our sponsor today, Bright Sellers, but more on them later. For now, we need to make lobster stock. So let's just jump right into it. Now, I don't love killing lobsters, and I'm not certain about the best way to do it, but the way that I like to do it is to keep these guys nice and calm. I rub them in between their eyeballs, and then I'm eventually, right before I'm going to throw them into some water, stab them in between the eyes and the head, which may seem ridiculous, and there is some debate about it, but this is what they say is the most humane way to do it. Then I'm going to get 12 12 cups of water into a big pot. I'm gonna bring it up to a boil and add some salt. And then right before I add the lobsters, I'm gonna take that knife, tap it in between the eyes, and then immediately into the water. I'm gonna put the lid on. I'm gonna lower it to a gentle boil so it doesn't overboil. And I'm gonna cook these pound and a quarter lobsters for eight minutes. In the meantime, I'm gonna get an ice bath ready. When that eight minutes is done, I'm gonna get the lobsters out of the boiling water and directly into the ice bath to cool completely before we begin to shuck them meat out of it. And then what we're left with is a lobster broth. A broth is a byproduct of cooking something rather than a stock, which is something you make on purpose. You want to run that through a strainer, get any of the gunk out of there, and then we're going to add some ice to it. We want this to cool down rapidly. We're going to use this broth as our base to make a stock. And whenever you make a stock, you always want to start with cold water. So we just want to cool this down so that we can have a nice, gentle extraction of the lobster shells and the vegetables. All right, so first we just want to remove the body. We're just going to twist. Just like that. Green stuff is the tamale. These might be some, some egg row. And we just want to make sure we clean that out. And then again, we're going to rip the claws off, being careful not to stab ourselves. Just another twist. The head and the shells of all of these are gonna go into our stock. So we wanna make sure we reserve everything. This is kind of a messy situation, so I put a cutting board inside of a sheet tray just to contain it all. And once you've ripped off all of the claws and the bodies, we can remove the meat. And the tails, you can just squeeze the shell into itself and it'll crack the ribs inside so you can sort of easily access the tail meat and pull it out. Then we want to split the tail meat in half. We're later going to cut it into bite-sized pieces. We just want to see if there's any gunk inside like there is here. There's a little tamale and there's a little bit of the egg roll. Tamale has a lot of like impurities and toxins that the lobster is sort of filtering out. So you don't want to eat it. So you just want to rinse any of that meat underwater until you've cleaned out any of the tamale. Give that board a wipe down. Then you want to remove the knuckle meat, which is kind of annoying to remove. Using the back of the knife, you want to crack the shells and then just sort of peel it out and gently pull out the knuckle meat without stabbing yourself like I just did here. Get a little band-aid, throw a little glove on, and just go ahead and remove all the knuckle meat. Keep everything nice and clean, and then the claws, and here's how to get them out in one nice piece. You're going to crack one flat side, you're going to crack the other flat side, then you're going to sit the claw up on its narrow side and crack it where those two cracks meet, and the shell should shard right off. Then you want to wiggle that tiny claw to release the meat inside the shell and then gently and slowly pull it out of the claw shell. There'll be a little skeleton that removes that you need to get out of the claw. And once you do, you'll have a perfectly edible intact lobster claw that we're going to use as a garnish later on. Once all the meat is removed from the shells, you want to take the shells themselves, clean them, make sure there's no tamale in those as well, and then chop those up into smaller pieces. That's just going to make it easier to fit into the pot and to get a better extraction of flavor. This stock is going to be the secret to this recipe and all the flavor is in these shells. Now we have our lobster shells. They're cut up. They're cleaned of any sort of gunk to the best of our ability. And now we're going to set them off to the side while we slice up our lobster for the risotto. And so now I have these beautiful claws, some knuckle meat and some tail meat. I'm just going to dice up the tail meat and the knuckle meat. I'm going to keep the claws whole for the garnish on top so we know what kind of risotto it is. And then I'm going to chop these up into very bite-sized pieces. 
Just the perfect bite to fit into a risotto. And this will reheat right up in the risotto. Now lobster is a beautiful thing. You don't want it to be too small and get lost in the risotto, but you also don't want it to be too big and sort of not fit in. So nice little chunks are gonna be a nice little surprise and a little pop of lobster throughout the risotto. And now you can totally prepare this all in a day, but due to my schedule, I'm making the stock ahead of time. So we're just gonna hold this lobster meat cool in the refrigerator until we're ready to use it. And then we're just gonna reheat it tomorrow when we make our risotto. It's perfectly cooked. It's not tough at all. A little gentle heat to reheat it at the end of the cooking process. The result's still gonna be perfect, I promise. So into the fridge until tomorrow. Here we just have a little mirepoix, a couple of little celery sticks, a couple of carrots, an onion, and some garlic. And this is just gonna be the base flavors of the stock. Now, since we're gonna cook this for a little bit shorter of a time than we would, say, a beef stock, I'm gonna cut everything just a little bit smaller. Roughly the same size, but just a little smaller. Then I'm gonna get that into that pan with all the lobster shells, and then on the stove, I have a big Dutch oven that I have preheated. I'm gonna add a few tablespoons of olive oil, and then in go the shells and the vegetables. And they're all gonna release their liquid off the bat. And I just wanna cook them for a few minutes until that liquid has evaporated, and you can see some fun developing on the pan. Then I'm gonna add some thyme and bay leaf. And then once we see that moisture has evaporated and that fond is building up on the bottom of the pan, we're gonna add two tablespoons of tomato paste. And we're just gonna mix it in and work it in until that's distributed throughout the vegetables and the shells. And you can see a deeper fond starting to develop on the bottom of the pan. Then we're gonna take some wine. I have a nice Chardonnay here that I'm gonna talk about later. And I'm gonna deglaze that pan. And I'm gonna cook that until it's reduced to almost nothing. And then I'm gonna take that lobster broth that we made earlier and add it directly into the pan and bring that up to just the gentlest simmer possible. We really don't even want it to see it boiling. We just wanna see little bubbles occasionally breaking at the surface without much movement in the liquid at all. I'm just gonna move the pot to the lowest burner that I have and we're gonna cook this for two hours. This is what it's like after one hour. You can see a little bit of scum has accumulated on the top. We're just gonna strain that out. And then this is after another hour, a total of two hours of cooking. We're gonna turn the heat off and allow it to cool. I'm gonna give it one final strain off the top. And once it's cool, I'm gonna take a fine mesh strainer and a large bowl, and we're just gonna strain out all the shells and the vegetables in that fine mesh strainer. Using the ladle to push any of those juices out that are gonna be absorbed in the shell and the vegetables. And you should be left with about three quarts of lobster stock. We're gonna let it cool. We're gonna portion it into quart containers. We're gonna lay it and we're gonna set this into the refrigerator until tomorrow when we're ready to make our risotto. Now, as you saw before, we are using wine in this recipe. And as an adult, I like to have lots of wine on hand. Whether it's for when a guest comes over or when I'm invited someplace, I have a bottle ready to go without having to go shopping that I can bring as a gift. However, visiting a wine store is not my favorite. I get lost just staring at things. I never ask for help. I really don't know what I'm looking at and it just takes me way too much time, which is why I love our sponsor today, Bright Cellars. Bright Cellars matches you with wines from small vineyards all over the world curated specifically to your palate. With hundreds of wine brands, you'll be able to try new wines that you've never tasted before. Each box comes with wine education cards for each bottle that outline the tasting notes, suggested pairing, best serving temperature, and origin. So whether you have guests or you're giving it as a gift, you know what you're talking about, you sound like a pro, and you're learning about wine. Bright Cellars offers a variety of sustainable brands in their repertoire of wines. Let's see which one I wanna to use today. Humdrum has some hints of lemon. We're using lemon in our recipe, so I think this one is gonna match perfectly. Let's give it a taste. Smells nice. Nice and dry, not too sweet. Just a little acidic, not too much. It's gonna balance the sweetness of the lobster. It's gonna go great. And so after some real hard negotiations, I was able to get you guys 50% off your first six bottle box, totaling just $55, including shipping, when you visit my link down in the description. So go check out Bright Cellars, and let's get back into the recipe. So now it's Monday. Yesterday was Sunday. We did a little bit of prep. We had made a little stock. Kind of didn't take too long. It just sort of sat on the stove while we hung out. That little prep work is paying dividends today during a weeknight because now we can throw together like a five star meal in about 20 to 30 minutes. Got my lobster stock here. All I wanna do is get that into a little pot. We wanna bring it up to temperature. You never add a cold stock to a risotto that slows down the cooking you want hot. So we just need to warm it back up. We're just gonna get that on the stove. Just need about four cups of the stock to one cup of risotto rice, or I prefer carnarole. It's a little bit more capable 
catered to making risotto. I'm just topping off the stock with a little water because I like to always have extra. So while that comes up to temperature, we've got some other ingredients. Of course, we have our wine. We need about a cup of the rice. I'm gonna cut up two shallots. I'm gonna chop up some parsley. I have some mascarpone cheese, which is my risotto secret, along with some black truffle butter, which is optional. You can use regular unsalted butter, but if you can find some truffle butter, that's the best in my opinion. We're gonna keep these in the refrigerator. I've got some Parmesan cheese and some lemon. I'm gonna set these off to the side, and we've also got our lobster meat. Now I'm gonna reheat these claws in some butter, and then the little knuckle chunks and the tail meat, that's gonna be tossed in at the end of the risotto, and we're just gonna allow the risotto heat to kind of warm it back up. We don't want it tough. Each piece of this lobster is going to be lusciously tender, I promise you. Set this off to the side. So just measure out the carnaroli or the arborio rice, whatever rice you're using, about one cup. Then we're gonna take two small shallots or one large one, and I wanna dice them very finely, about the size of the rice. Get that into a bowl. And then we're gonna take a little parsley. We're gonna chop that parsley up super fine. We're gonna get that into a bowl, and then we have all of our ingredients prepped. But to get this started, we really just need to start with the rice, the shallots, and the wine. In a high-rimmed pot, I'm gonna add a little bit of olive oil, and once it's hot, I'm gonna get the shallots in, and I'm gonna sweat the shallots out. We don't wanna create any color. We just wanna get all of their natural juices released, and to get them looking translucent and soft. And then we can add the rice. And we wanna get the rice cooked Coat it in that oil and we want to start to toast it. And once you can start to smell a little roasty nuttiness from the rice, then we can get our wine out again and we can deglaze that pot with about a cup of that wine or so. We're going to cook the wine until it hits reduced to almost nothing and then we're going to begin to add the stock one ladle at a time, cooking it down on a medium, medium low heat, nice and gently and slowly until that rice absorbs each batch of stock. I like to use a spatula to cook risotto. It helps you clean up the sides easily. And then we're we're gonna also use it to test how reduced the stock is. And when I drag it across the bottom of the pan and can see the pan, I'm gonna add another ladle of stock. And I'm gonna do this repetitively for about 20 to 25 minutes until the rice has absorbed the stock, the rice is cooked, and it's creamy. You do need to stir it, but you don't need to stir it constantly the entire time. Phases of stirring, but you do want to stir to make sure that nothing at the bottom of the pan catches and sticks. The stirring also beats the starch out of the rice and creates that creaminess and cohesiveness that we look for in a risotto. About 15, 20 minutes into the cooking process, I'm going to start to reheat the lobster claws. In a small pan, I'm going to get a little bit of butter melted, and I'm going to add the lobster claws and just baste them in the hot butter until they're warmed through. I'm also going to hit them with a little flaky salt. Now it's about 20 minutes or so into the cooking process and we're almost done. I'm gonna keep adding the stock and cooking it, but I'm gonna start tasting it now more often to see where I'm at. It still needs a few minutes, but you can see the rice and the sauce starting to come together and become one. And once there's no more stickiness, it doesn't stick to the teeth, it's al dente, but it's nice and tender and it's creamy. A quick toss in the pan is gonna reveal to me I have a proper consistency, the way that it sort of flows and crashes like a wave on a beach. I'm gonna taste it now to make sure the rice is done, which it is, but I'm gonna adjust the seasoning with a little salt. And then I'm gonna turn the heat off and I'm gonna add that lobster meat and get that worked in. Once that lobster meat is worked in and is nice and warm, I'm gonna add the mascarpone cheese, about two tablespoons or so, and get that stirred in. And that's gonna create an insane creaminess and some acidity that is gonna go really nicely in this dish. And it's one of my go-tos when making any risotto. Once the mascarpone is worked in, we're gonna take that truffle butter and we're gonna add another tablespoon or two, toss that right into the risotto. And these things are cold, so it's sort of tempering the risotto, cooling it down slightly so that we can then later add our Parmigiano cheese without getting it nice and stringy and clumpy. So once that butter's worked in, we're gonna add the chopped parsley, the Parmigiano cheese, and we wanna get those worked in really well, get that Parmesan cheese melted in, and then I'm gonna finish it with a little squeeze of lemon, and although you don't see it on camera, because I forgot to do it, I like to add lemon zest to it. That lemon zest really makes a big impact. Get everything stirred and start assessing your final consistency. The flavor's good, but it feels a little tight, so I'm gonna add just a little bit more of that stock, loosen it back up for plating, 
And once it's nice and loose, it's flowy, then we're ready to plate. And you really want that flowiness to be there because when you do go to plate it, you never really want it to just clump up into a pile of rice. It should be flowy because when you do plate it, it should cascade into a single beautiful layer that is the mark of a proper risotto. So once it's perfect, we're gonna spoon a ladle onto a plate and then we're going to bang the bottom of the plate, turning it all around to create one thin layer of risotto where you can almost see the risotto suspended in that sauce. We're gonna plate two claws on top to clearly indicate to the diner what kind of risotto we're enjoying today. And you're gonna take a bite, get tender pops of lobster and be blown away at the difference that a homemade lobster stock is gonna make. It's just stupid good. There's no fishiness at all. It's just smooth, mellow, oceanic flavors, which is what you want out of seafood. And if you want to make it, the recipe is going to be down in the description. I want to thank Bright Sellers for sponsoring this video. That's all that I have today. I'll see you next time. Until then, take care of yourself and go feed yourself. If you want more seafood recipes, I just posted one of my favorite recipes, a spicy tuna on crispy rice. It's a real killer dish. If you've never tried it before, now is the time to get your hands on some good tuna and give it a shot. Thanks for watching.